Guarding the entrance to the Cookmere Valley is the Long Man of Wilmington, a giant hill carving whose ancient origins are still uncertain. Lullington Church is misleadingly described as the smallest church in England. It holds just 20 people and is in fact part of the chancel of a much larger edifice destroyed during the time of Cromwell. The famous author Virginia Woolf moved here to Monk's house in Rodmell in 1919. It was to be her last home, for 22 years later, she walked down this road to the River Ouse and drowned herself. On the eve of 1264, Simon de Montfort and his army camped on Fletching Common before the Battle of Lewis. It is said the knights that were killed in that battle were buried here in this church of Fletching. A.A. Milne was the creator of the whimsical tales about this glorious teddy bear, Winnie the Pooh, which belonged to his son, Christopher Robin. It was in this very shop, Pooh Corner in Hartfield, that Christopher Robin used to come and buy his bullseye with his nurse on a Saturday morning. This is Burwash, whose picturesque tree-lined high street now attracts many visitors. Yet less than 300 years ago, this was one of the main centres of the iron industry. In 1902, Rudyard Kipling, the author and poet, purchased Batons together with the old mill by the Dudwell stream. In his autobiography, Kipling tells of joy, of our very own house, we found, he writes, no shadow of ancient regrets, stifled miseries, nor any other menace. The hamlet of Brightling lies in the hilly surrounds of the High Weald, and it's here that the eccentric MP, Mad Jack Fuller, lived and built his strange follies. Born in 1757, he represented Sussex in four parliaments, where his ebullient personality and 22 stone frame gave rise to all sorts of risque tales. Most of the follies are visible from the road, but there is a five mile circular walk that will encompass all six. From the village, the first folly, the 65 foot Brightling Needle, tops Brightling Beacon, one of the highest points in Sussex. It was thought Fuller erected it to celebrate Wellington's victory over Napoleon in 1815. Less than a hundred years ago, barges could sail up the river to Orfriston and moor at an old wharf by St Andrew's Church. Smugglers, too, would sail up the river by night to visit their leader, Stanton Collins, who lived in the village. Today, the only commuters are swans and ducks. 